Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Rasha Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Lord. Oh, yes, Father. This is Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's we start with a little worship song. Come on, guys. We praise the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Guys, you can share this broadcast. God going to do a powerful miracle in your life. Something going to happen this morning. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Something going to happen this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank Lord. you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We give you glory. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, good morning, uh, Sister Caroline. Thank you so much for joining us. Come on, come on, Ronald. Thank you so much for joining us. Really, today I have a powerful, a servant of God, a general of God, a powerful, mighty man of God, and I believe God going to do a miracle in your life. Something going to happen this morning in your life. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a powerful man of God right now with me, and another man of God is on the way. He is on the way, a powerful man of God. Come on, guys. Give us favor and share this broadcast. And please shout out where are you watching us? Come on. Where from you watching us? Please show up in comments. Come on. Hallelujah. And my brother Thomas, I want to say you welcome. Thank you, my brother. It's great to be here. Uh, this is a day that the Lord has made, and we are, are grateful and thankful, and, and we're rejoicing in this day that he's made. Amen. Come on. Really, I have honor and privilege to have you in my broadcast and also uh, Ren as well. I know he's, uh, he's coming. He's on the way. After a few minutes, he will be on screen. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thomas, really, God is so good. And I believe this is a wonderful time. Come on, people watching us from different nations. Uh, this is a good time for nations. This is a good time for nations. Come on. Uh, welcome, Thomas, one more time. And uh, share whatever you lead by Holy Spirit. Uh, during it, uh, few minutes, in a few minutes, and other powerful man of God, Pastor Ren Sheffman, he's on the way. And I will bring him up on screen in a few minutes. Come on. Yes, I'm in. It's, it's great to be here. Um, it's a time of the nations. Jesus said, go and make disciples of nations. It's Come on. a time of discipling. It's a time um, that God is going to show his goodness. And his goodness and grace is going to be revealed upon the earth. Wow. And he will draw it. Jesus said, if my name be lifted up. See, um, we've, we've been in a time where ministry names and, and people's names have been lifted up. But, but they can't save you. Only one can save you. And that's the name of Jesus Christ. It's and no one comes to the Father except through Him. And Hallelujah. So, 
these other things, these ministries and names and stuff, they must bow to the name of Jesus because only Christ can save. Only Christ was worthy to break open the seven seals. And the fullness of the Godhead um, and, and fullness of Christ in you, which is the hope of glory, is available for you. But it only comes through him. Amen. And, um, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Uh, come on. So, and, come and on. Come on. Praise God. God. Praise God. <clears throat> the Lord reminded me, I kept seeing 22, 22, and, and today's a 22. And right now, for me, it's Come 10, on, today's a 22, it's, right? <laughs> it is 10, 22 right now. And the Lord is speaking about the government of God, um, the government of God upon the shoulder of the believer. And um, it's Christ in you, right? The anointing that will teach you all things that you shall have no man to teach you. The government of God. And the key of David, Isaiah 22, 22, and that the on. key of David is upon the believer. I will unlock things that no man can can shut, and I will close things that no man can open, says the Lord. And it's a yes. time of victory. Somebody say victory today. Victory in your healing. Victory wow. in your finances. Victory in, in your, your breakthrough. God just doesn't break us through. He breaks through, breaks us loose, and breaks us out into a whole nother dimension. Um, and, and it's time for, for the suddenlies of God. And it's time for many to be activated in this season. Um, and you are not born, I declare, you are not born with a spirit of fear, but of power, right? Power. What does power Jesus. look like? Power for healing, power for deliverance, power of the kingdom of heaven, right? It's here, it's now. It's not just for when we die. The kingdom is here, it's now. And the power of the gospel, right, is in the kingdom and only through Christ. And uh, <laughs> hallelujah, praise God. And, and today, the power of God is going to go out into the earth, even through this broadcast. And, and people will be delivered. People will be healed and set free. And also, um, the spirit of God, only the spirit of God can open the eyes, right? I was blind and now I see. I was lost and now I'm found. Only God can do that. We can't do that by reading a book. We can't do that by by any other means but through his spirit, right? It's only through the spirit of Christ. It's only through the anointing. Um, and that's what he sent. Uh, and that's what John, when he said to, to Peter, who, who do men say that I am? And he got many, many answers, right? Everything probably from, you know, you're Jeremiah, you're Isaiah. And some probably said, you're crazy, right? And But he said, who do you say that I am? But the father had revealed to him that he was the Christ. He was the okay. Christ. He was the anointing. Amen. Thomas, uh, our God. friend, our friend, a man of God, he's ready and he is really on the way. And I love to bring him up on screen. Guys, she is a man of God, Pastor Ren Sheffrin, a great, a mighty man of God, a powerful man of God, healing, deliverance, and a uh, word of uh, prophetic word, word of knowledge, uh, the part of his ministry, God using him with a sign and wonders. Come on, I love to bring him up on the screen. Say him welcome, guys. Show up in comments and say him welcome. Write down in comments and say welcome, Pastor Ren. Come on. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Man of God, I want to say you welcome. Hey, good evening in Pakistan. How's everyone doing tonight? Oh, really good, really good. And I love to say both of you, very warm welcome, Pastor Ren and Pastor Thomas. Uh, both of you are a mighty servants of God, a powerful man of God. And I believe, oh, we love Ren, man. Man, welcome. Look, people really love you around the world. We love Ren and uh, welcome, Brother Ren. Yes, our husband and also Sister Caroline. Oh, wow, Pastor Ren, welcome. Come on, man, man, man. Everybody Amen. want to be welcome. Okay, guys, give us favor and share this broadcast. Share this broadcast and Pastor Thomas already uh, shared something. Please continue. Then I love to say, Ren, uh, share whatever he lead by Holy Spirit. Uh, Thomas, please continue your point. Come on. Yes, it's and well, the Lord is speaking. Today is the 22nd. I kept seeing 22, 22. And when I started this, the Lord showed me it was 10, 22, even as I started this. Um, so the Lord speaking about the government of God. 
Many, many um, people in the prophetic circles talk about God's judgment, but the Bible says his judgment is every day. So it's not just times and seasons, but it's every day. Um, the Bible says that you will be judged in the amount that you judge. So that judgment is a spiritual law, which is applies to us every day. And the amount that we forgive will be forgiven. And the amount that we judge, we're going to be judged. So so we get to set our own rules, so to speak. And God, is, is his grace and mercy is always there for us every day. And it's sufficient for us, right? So we always call upon the grace and the mercy seat of God to get us through because it's an empowerment to overcome. And we are more than overcomers through the spirit of Christ. And it's the governmental, um, it's the government of God and the open doors that, that, that the Lord is opening now, even bringing many from the back to the front and revealing those that have been hidden in the secret place um, mm -hmm. and to come forth to establish his government here on earth. We are in the book of Daniel talked about the five kingdoms and we're, we're in the fifth and final kingdom, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth. And that was the Lord's prayer, right? Um, for his come people, on. for his disciples. And um, Jesus didn't just say, go build a church. He said, go into all the world and make disciples of nations. And, and that's his heart. Jesus wasn't just in the church, building a church, building a ministry. He went into the world. He went into the streets. He went to the lost, to the broken, wherever the father sent him. And uh, we are living in this day now because he was the first of many born in the government of God rest upon the shoulders of those Come who on. believe and are, and are called according to his purpose. Um, and we are those people. <laughs> it's an amazing time that we live in, a time that prophets of old and kings of old only could dream about. They could only see it in the future, but we live that. Um, and uh, uh, I saw Ren, I, I keep seeing Dr. Ren Shuffman over you. And, and I don't know if you've been thinking about furthering your education or, or whatever it is, but I keep seeing this Dr. Ren Shuffman over you. And um, <laughs> so uh, uh, whatever that is worth, um, I, I believe that's the Lord. Um, and uh, God bless you, my friend. It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. Uh, well, I'm just going to say this, that, you know, uh, you're, you were the first one to prophesy over me about being forensically prophetic. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm not a prophet to begin with, let alone be forensically prophetic. And you were very, very right about that. So now you're sending yeah. me back to school, man. Like, what? <laughs> Come on. Thanks. <laughs> all right. I'm just going to believe that the Lord is going to have some university give me an honorary doctorate for all of my ministry work, you know? Uh, I'll, I'll take in. I'll take that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, you, no, you're, you're talking about the kingdom of, of God, Thomas, and you're talking about the, the authority of God coming to earth. And you were talking about the key of David in particular. And I just started writing about this in my book that I'm doing uh, about the key of David and about the difference between the kingdoms of Saul and David and that David had this key, you know, and that and that we in Revelations uh, we learn about the key of David appearing again, right? It, it shows up in Isaiah 22, uh, 22, and then we learn about it again in Revelation. So it, ta it takes all of uh, Isaiah, Psalms, and then to Revelation for us to see the key of David start manifesting again. And I believe you are exactly right. We're in a season where the key of David has been released on the earth. The authority of the kingdom of God is beginning to be released on the earth in even greater portion. You know, I talked recently about this revival that's coming and, and we've talked about that uh, for a long time. And, you know, uh, one of the, pl the place that I released it, this is, this is so interesting. So if you, wherever you're watching in the world, understand this applies to you. So I released this revelation about this coming revival, this outpouring of fire on the people of God and how we're going to see the greatest harvest of souls ever. And the place that I released it, I was sitting on the beach in California when I released this word that the Lord had given me about an outpouring of fire and, and where the word kind of came together with a, with a good pastor friend of mine, Jesse West. And we're sitting on the beach in California and what's happening right now on the beaches in California. Thousands of people are coming to the beach every single day and being baptized in the ocean, hearing the gospel and being led to Jesus. It's a, another Jesus people movement that's happening on the beaches in California 
uh, that are pouring out. We are in a season now where things that were just like what you said, that were locked to us are now open again. And so, and I, and I say again, but the truth is a lot of this is first time. Um, I think there are new things being unlocked right now that we've never even seen. So you're going to see like more signs and miracles ramped up, uh, increase of the power of God, just flowing through, uh, everyday, uh, ministers and everyday ministries at, you know, people just walking on the street, praying for people. And we're going to see an increase of miracle signs and wonders because that's how, you know, the kingdom of God is at hand. Praise the, God. What did Jesus say? He says, you know, uh, father, let them be one as you and I are one I'm in you and you're in me. And then the world will know that you sent me. That's, that's the key to finding out the world will send me. How would the world know that he's the sent one? Well, he'll answer that the same way he did with John the Baptist. When John the Baptist sent, you know, for, for word to find out like, hey, I'm sitting in prison. I'm, I'm literally sitting in prison and this guy's saying he's the Messiah. Is he really the Messiah? So he sent a messenger to him and said, hey, tell me, are you really the one that was sent? And Jesus's reply tells us how we know uh, uh, how that prayer in John is supposed to be answered. He says this. He says, tell John this. The dead are raised, the sick are healed, the le the leopards are cleansed. Come on. And he, he, the demons are cast out. So he starts to tell him, you know that I'm the sent one because there are signs and wonders that follow me. So when Jesus says, let them be one as you and I are one, I'm in you and you're in me. And then the world, when you come together, then the world will know I'm the sent one. So how That's will true. the world know? Just because we're we're all in unity? No, because there'll be a great outpouring of power that will demonstrate that he's the one that's sent. And, and, and the key for that, the catalyst for that was coming together in unity, us coming together. Mm -hmm. um, and you're starting to see that happening and you're starting to see the outpouring happening. You're starting to see that Isaiah 22, 22 begin to manifest things in the heavenlies have been unlocked. So I'm right on the page with you, Thomas. Uh, it's an exciting, it is the most exciting time to be a Christian. Oh, man. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, Lord. Thomas. Come on, right. yeah. Lord, thank you, Jesus. I mean, we're, see we're seeing it now just online, aren't we? When have we ever seen a, a time where you could get online, talk about the gospel, pray for people, and see people get healed, see prophetic words come out? You know, see lives change. Like, when has this ever happened in the history of mankind? This is completely and totally unique to the history of the gospel story, where where now we can reach nations with with a click of a a, a button. I, I completely agree. I believe that it is a time of of seeing as well, um, because Jesus said this. He said, "I only do what I see my Father do." And yeah. this was only this was born through what through love, love and obedience to the Father. And I believe that's what we're going to see uh, in the earth. Uh, we're going to see um, we're going to see um, uh, young men and women, old men and women that are going to be sold out for the gospel because they see what the Father's doing. And that's really what it's about. Because a lot of people, what what God's doing, they look to a a prophetic voice or this or that, and they could hear a, a whole slew of things. Um, but when you when you hear and see what the Father's doing for yourself, you know that's him. Jesus said, my children know my voice and they cannot be taken from me. And so there's an opening, there's an opening in the spirit for the children of God, for the children um, in, in, in discipleship of Christ. And, and, and it comes with power and authority, right? Jesus, Jesus commissioned, sent, empowers. Um, only Christ can do this. So, so this is what we're going to be seeing on the earth because it is an army of God. It is a bride of, of God. Um, it is his, his beloved, right? Um, Jesus said, who is my brother and my sister? He said, he didn't say those of blood. He said, those that do the will of my father. And, and so this comes as a package um, but the world will never know us until we learn to lay our lives down for each other. Yeah. What does that look like? It looks like putting someone else above yourself. That's what Jesus said to his father when he said, when he said, he said, father, if it be your will, take this cup from me, but nevertheless, let your will be done. So Jesus demonstrated something there about laying down your life 
for the greater for 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 the father right because it's his will it's his pleasure that is the will of god the pleasure of god mm -hmm. the will of god and that's that's really what we need to tap into as as sons as brothers and, and to learn that hey it's not just about me having a church or ministry and you going and sweeping my floors it's about me laying down my life for you as a son and in me demonstrating Come on. The, the, the power of God, the love of Come God, on. and the understanding that we're all here for a short time. And it's not, you know, we our safety isn't in some kind of a mask or some kind of a, a ritual. Our safety is in Christ alone, right? That's our eternal blessing is only through him. And it's that reconciliation unto the Father. And, and, and it's when we see the Father, when we're reconciled to the Father, when we see and do what he asks, that's when it all happens. That's when it all begins to come together because our um, because we become one, right? We can't become one with each other until we become one with him. Yeah. Um, Jesus said in John 15, he says, those that love the Lord, the Father will love them. And we, we it says we will come make our abode with them. And that's, Amen. I mean, that, that I believe is the glorification process here on the earth. Um, Jesus went through different levels, right? Uh, when he went into the desert, he, he had to be tested, right? First, he, he got baptized in the river, and then he went to, to be dealt with with the devil, right? But he overcame the ways of the devil. He overcame. Come on. Even, and the, the first thing the devil used against him was the Bible, right? The scripture. Um, <laughs> to say, hey, you know, Psalm 91, it, it, it says that the Father gives charge over his angels. And just go jump off the cliff. And he says, don't tempt God. Why? Because he loved God. See, it was his love for the Father that drove him. And that's what needs to drive us as the body of Christ, is our great love for each other and for the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. It's Praise good. God. Come on, man. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, give us favor and share this broadcast. Yeah, hit give share. Come on. Ten groups. Share it in ten I groups. Know. Ten group, at least ten groups. <laughs> share, 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 please. Share, share, share. At least in ten groups. Yes. If you need healing and uh, deliverance, and if you need prophetic word, you are here at the right broadcast. Ooh. There are mighty servants of God. If you know any somebody they need healing, you can bring them in this broadcast. Come on, invite them and send them invitation and uh, bring them. In this broadcast, God going to bless them. God going to heal them. God going to deliver them. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. And I am also uh, want to give a quick announcement. Come on. Uh, if anybody want to sow the seed for uh, Feed My Sheep program in Pakistan uh, to feed hungry and needy people, come on. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, you can sow your seed if anybody want to be a partner with us in the Clean Water Project. We have a Clean Water Project in that area. Uh, in Pakistan, people, a thousand children dying without clean water. A thousand children dying. Thank you so much for sharing. Please keep sharing. And uh, if you want to sow the seed, you can make a big difference with your small seed. You can sow whatever you lead by Holy Spirit. There is a link, PayPal. And if anybody wants to uh, sow the seed through the Cash App, I can send the link as well. So please feel free, whatever you lead by Holy Spirit. Amen. Share and sow the seed. Amen. Come on. Uh, Feed My Sheep program we have in Pakistan uh, from FFC Church, from uh, uh, Ren Sheffman Church. So I thank God for my wonderful brother Ren Sheffman and also my brother Thomas there. Both guys are partner with us in the program Feed My Sheep. So you can sow the seed, you can feed one family, two family, whatever you can. Come on, guys. Yes, hey, Ren. Let me, say, let me say something about that. Just so everyone knows, when you sow a seed into Pastor Shazad's ministry and what we're doing in Pakistan, just understand that PayPal goes right to him, but I actually see all of those givings, okay? So I just want you to see that Pastor Shazad because he's in Pakistan, he's he's submitted, um, you know, oversight to us to make sure that that money is actually going to good causes, you know, it, it, and it's going to the right places. And we know what's coming in and what's going out. So there's an accountability factor there. So when you're sowing your seed, you're doing it with with American accountability. So I just want you to know it is good ground. It is very good ground to sow into. So, you know, he's not just asking for money so that he can go uh, buy fancy things for, for uh, his home. In fact, I know in particular, 
going from the second largest church in Pakistan to there is no churches in Pakistan right now. They're all shut down. They're, they're, they're not open. They're not able to meet anymore. So you're talking about meeting with thousands of people on a Sunday morning to nothing overnight. This is the time where you need to sow in and help nations. Uh, uh, every church in America is struggling too, but not like some of these nations are. Uh, we're at least able to do some things. So sow in, be a part of what God is doing in those nations, and just know that we're keeping it accountable and making sure that that goes to the right place and that it's taken care. You know, and I know that, uh, Thomas, you know, we, we work with nations all over the world and uh, many different nations. You're big in Brazil. You're big in Africa. I'm big in Africa. I'm big in Pakistan. And, and there's lots of nations that we work with. And so we make sure we vet these ministries to make sure that the money is going to the right places so that they're safe for people to sow into. So please give today into the ministry. Not if you want to. Come on, guys. You, you, you got to be beyond yourself. If you, if you got a fridge full of food, help someone else at least have some food today. Uh, it really is dire in some of these nations, including Pakistan, what's happening over there. Uh, Thank you, Ren. Yeah, let me let me speak into um, what what was being said right there. Let, let me speak into that just for a second. I was I was praying last night. I was up pretty late and I was praying and the Lord gave me a word and said this to me. He said he said he's beginning to turn over the rocky soil, the hard soil and make the soil plantable again. And I heard the Lord say that very clearly. He says, I'm taking the hard soil and I'm making it plantable again so that your seeds will fruit much easier now. And the Lord wasn't just talking about financial seeds. He was just talking about seeds. He was very clear to me about what seeds he was referencing. And he was saying this, he's saying the things that we're doing right now, Everything in ministry that we're doing, every seed we plant, every time we pray for someone, every time we uh, preach the gospel, every time we go somewhere, every time we uh, uh, pray you know, for a breakthrough from the Lord, every time we're asking for favor, the Lord is saying this, every seed, every prayer that's coming out of our mouths right now is going into the ground and is rooting much easier and it's coming up with fruit much easier. So you are in a season now where if you have been praying like what... Uh, um, Thomas was talking about when he's mentioning Daniel, you know, Daniel prayed for 29 straight days waiting for this answer. This is a season where when you begin to pray, that prayer is going to root and fruit much faster than it ever has before. So you're in a season of acceleration right now. And that applies to everybody. I'm not talking to pastors today. I'm talking to sons and daughters. When yes. you pray, you're going to see the reciprocation of God answering much quicker because the soil of your life is much more conducive to growing. Uh, I hope that makes sense. And so I believe that now is the time for if you've given up hope on those prayer requests or you've began to struggle with God, are you going to do it? Stop asking that and just pray again. Pray into the soft soil that's prepared and ready for you. Amen. Uh, right. And I'm being clear. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying seeds. We, we, we get confused because I think because of a uh, televangelism that when someone says the word seeds are talking about money and that is not at all. It seeds encompasses everything in our walk. Okay. So I'm just being clear there. I'm talking about seeds of faith, seeds of, of finances, seeds of prayer, seeds of hope, seeds of, uh, of, 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 uh, ministry seeds of, uh, evangelism. What, you know, people are going to come to Jesus when you speak to them more readily. Like those are all seeds, anything that produces fruit, I guess anything that helps to produce fruit would be considered a seed, right? In fact, I think the only thing that's not a seed is the fig tree in the Bible. That was the only thing that didn't have any seeds. Amen. 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 Come, on, Thomas. Come on, Thomas. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Jesus said, you know, if, if you've given these little ones a glass of water, you've, you've fed me and you will be blessed. And he said, and his disciples said to him, when did we feed you? When did we? And he's, you know, when, when you, when you love God, you don't do it just for the blessing. You do it because you love him. Um, in, 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 um, the Bible says those that are merciful shall receive mercy. So again, there, uh, I'm talking about, you know, spiritual blessings and spiritual laws, um, um, is, is that you will, you will reap what you sow. But a lot of people have to understand that, uh, just like any good farmer, you don't instantly see a harvest. 
you're always planting seeds for the next season. You're always planting seeds for the next year. And the American way is like this. I want what I want and I want it now. <laughs> you know, I, I sow a seed now. I want my return now. I want, you know, a thousand. And that's really what a lot of televangelists have promised people. Mm. And it didn't come through. Um, but, you know, the Bible promises that you will be blessed. And you will. because Not because I'm saying it, because he said it. He said, you know, if you fed these little ones, you fed me. And and it's not for what I can get out of it, but it's what I can do. And that's really what happens uh, when you enter into a certain maturity in the Lord is that you don't do it because you have to. You do it because you love him and you want to do these things, um, not because of something you can get. And that's, you know, uh, um, that's kind of a lot of what we've been taught, you know, is, is as American Christians, I know is that, you know, you need to sow to, to get right now, to get right now. If you want a, a thousand fold blessing on this, I'm going to, you know, uh, sow into this anointing, sow into this. And, and it's not necessarily true all the time um, because um, it's done even with the wrong motive. Um, and the motive with Christ is always love, right? Love covers sin, right? And mer God desires mercy over judgment. And, and, and many, you know, are, are, are judgment and, and, and this kind of stuff. And then you have a swing to the far left where, where everything mm. is grace. But God is God. You know, he, everything is made by him, for him, and through him. Come on. And that's what we have to understand, that he is God and I'm not. Amen. I'm his son. I'm his son. He loves me. And, and he teaches me every day. And, and who I was is not who I'm going to be tomorrow. And that's what his grace is for. His grace and mercy is there for me every day because I'm not going to end up where I started from. And he sees me, he, he brings me to it so he can see me through it. And I think many need to hear that today, that Come even on. the spot that they're in now is not a spot that you're going to stay. It's something you're going through. But God has victory in mind. You have a destiny. You you have, um, it's already been written it, um, and, and, and assigned to your life. And, and you must run your race in faith and stay strong in him. And it's not just enough to say, oh, Jesus. You know, to say the, the salvation prayer, but to to call upon the Lord in every day and every need that we have to seek him first. And that's when he's going to really accelerate. That's when your breakthrough is going to come through when you're Amen. really seeking the Lord. When you wake up in the morning and and, and call upon the grace and mercy of the Lord in, in the day and, and, and let his will be done in your life. Um, and I know, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Ren's talking about the seeds <laughs> and the seeds are in the heart. And really, um, God, the, the, the ground is right here and it's in me, it's in you. And, and that's what God wants more than anything in your life. He wants your heart. He wants to break up those hardened places. Oh. Even, uh, some people with trauma that have been abused and, and these kind of things, God, the spirit of peace wants to come in your heart. And, and what we have to do is we have to trust God and, Come on. and, and, and um, we have to give it to him so he can do something with it. Um, if the Bible says, if, you know, if we take if we take our own judgments and we apply them, he can't fight our battles and he won't. Be but when we turn it over to him, he fights our battles for us as a good father would. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on, come Amen. on. Dr. Awesome. Dr. Ren, you are awesome. Come what on. kind of one doctor approves of this message? Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that. Thomas said that. There is a sister, uh, Caroline. She said, look, it. look at the screen. Look at the screen. I saw it on the top. Okay. Dr. Dr. You, don't, you don't understand. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, uh, let, let me just please, say that we're, we're in the Ren, process right now. Ren, I, I'm, shh. We're in the process right now of starting a, a ministry school and, and you know and, and and training and equipping people. So uh, I'm gonna believe that there's that I'm gonna have to do my own schooling, I guess. There. Hey, look, my 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 father likes to help people with health and and people will call him Dr. Shuffman or you know, Dr. Edward, and, and he won't correct them. And I'm like, you know, you can go to prison for that, right? That's called <laughs> that's called impersonating a doctor. So we're not talking about me being a real doctor. It's just facetious, oh, right? On, so, man. but <laughs> <laughs> this hope... morning is an awesome morning. This morning is good, man. Uh, yeah, I'm more I'm more Doctor Strange than anything. That would be more accurate. Uh, <laughs> hey, but that's why I love the supernatural, right? Because I get to be a real life superhero, right? I get to be a real life Superman. Uh, that's why I love it. 
because I get to be you a real life Superman. Guys, I just want to uh going to tell you th- uh, something. I was in House of Ren almost more than one month. I was with him in uh, his home in Oklahoma. Really, he's a powerful, a humble, a really wonderful man of God. I was with him more than one month and I, every day, all the time, always with him. And I saw his life. He's a so simple. And I, I was in his home. And really, I'm blessed because uh, he's a great man of God. But he's really so humble and so simple. His home is really uh, like a humble people, a normal home. And his church is good. And he's a prayer, he's a prayer man. I want to say he's really a powerful man with the he spent a lot of time in feet of God and I really appreciate him. I really appreciate him. Ren is an amazing man of God. And I hope this trip I will stay in Thomas' home as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think you and Thomas were talking earlier and he said he was gonna snuggle you to make sure you felt comfortable. Um, <laughs> Come on, come on, boy. <laughs> and Ren is also a technical boy. Ren is also a master man and technical boy. Right, Thomas? Yeah. You know that. That's just, right. Yeah, That's just right. so you guys know, I'm actually like the most humble, like the most yeah. humble of anyone I know. I'm the most humble. So he's right. He's absolutely right. He's a key boy. I want to say he's a key boy. He knows lots of things about media. He's a pastor. He's a, uh, he, uh, God used him like a, 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 with the prophetic words and healing. Yeah. And uh, he's a key boy. He's doing lots of stuff with the media. He helped me. He helped Thomas. And he helped a lot of, lots of other friends as well. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if I was, yeah, I probably would have a pretty good career being a tech if I wasn't a pastor all the time. Uh, in fact, that's that's something that we're starting right now. Like, I just had a phone conversation with a group of uh, of of, of uh, powerful, you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord that they're not ministers, they're not pastors, right? They don't go out and preach, but they do have technical media hearts and mindsets. Uh, for strategies in media. And I met with them and I said, look, I have pastors all the time that need help in order to get the message out. And so we're actually creating like this network that we can help to, uh, you know, how, how can we media this thing out? Because I believe that's the new world is, is being able to reach people in this fashion. And, and let me say this, uh, the, the church model has to change. Like, and you guys that are watching are very uh, aware of this. And let me give you an example. The church model has to change. I'm not saying we're going to stop doing in-person meetings, that we're going to stop having gatherings. That's not going to change. But what does have to change is what we're doing in the in-betweens. And what I mean by that is, is, um, I, you know, I, I've been watching this. I do the power hour prayer every single night, my time at eight o'clock uh, central time, 8 PM. And when I do that, I'll have anywhere from 150 to 450 people congruently on the broadcast watching in that range somewhere. But then on Sunday mornings, when I do my church service with my technical know-how, my multiple cameras, my expensive systems, my expensive lighting for staging, and, and all the stuff we spent a lot of money and time developing. Do you know that that uh, this past Sunday, I had about 50 or so congruent watchers on on Sunday morning, but then immediately Monday night, I have 150. So three times the amount of people will tune in to me sitting here in my office, as opposed to going live in the big fancy setup I did. And the reason is same pastor, same pastor, same, same, same pastor. The difference is, is that this one is engaging you. We're watching your comments. We're praying for you. We're prophesying over you. We are engaging you on Sunday morning. You're just listening to another message. And so our messaging has to change. Our marketing perspective of, of what people are hungry for has to change. They're not hungry just to just absorb somebody else's speech. They're interested in, 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 uh, individual ministry. And that's what's shifting in our culture is that people want to be engaged in the conversation about their faith. And that's why I love doing uh, this so much because it is reaching people at a different level in a different uh, uh, way. And so that's why I love doing ministry and jumping on here, praying and prophesying over you guys. So you're hearing what we're talking about, but we're going to engage you in personal ministry. So uh, 
that, that's important to me. And, and, you know, I blame my entire season, what's happening now and how I have to get on and prophesy over everyone completely and totally on Thomas. It's his fault. He's the one that called me out on it. And, and uh, so now I, I have to do it because he said, it's who I am and anything less would be denying my identity. And I know, and I know he has a powerful healing ministry himself. You know, Thomas, you and I were both in California with Pastor Shazad, right? We went, we were at Peter Crawford's house having dinner and he laid Lonnie Frisbee's jacket on us and anointed us. <laughs> and, and literally everything he said to me in that season has come to pass. Everything that he prophesied over me that night and that mantle that was laid on me. And you guys remember, you know, we all had a, a powerful experience with the Lord. You know, they put that jacket on me and I was like pressed through the concrete, not through the carpet, through the concrete. Like the Lord just laid on me so heavy. It was like he just laid on top of me and I couldn't get up for, for a minute. You know, you prayed for me and, and, and Peter prayed for me. And it was like something got released on my life. And then shortly after that, you and I did a live and you were saying, you're going to be a forensic prophet. And I'm like, I'm not even a prophet. What are you talking about forensic? Can we just not skip to the end? Like, stop it. And uh, uh, that terrified me. And now to be walking in that, like something has shifted over the last few months. And, and let me say this to you, Thomas, like I, I literally see, you know, and I know you already walk in a powerful healing anointing, you know, you walk around and pray for people and the power of God happens, but I actually see like a shift happening for you in that same regard. I actually see that something I, I'm looking and I see the Lord. I see the moment in California where, we, where Lonnie's jacket was laid on you, where we were praying for you. And I see the Lord just uh, I see a whiteboard and he's putting a mark on, on the whiteboard and it's a timeline. Okay. And I see that mark in California and he put a mark there and he says, this was a marker in your life. And, and I'm actually seeing him draw like a loop and, and, and there's an X there, another mark that says now, and he, he's showing me, he's filling it in. He's saying there was a release of power and authority that came on your life that day, a different level of unlocking. So some things that were held up were unlocked that day. And he says, you haven't yet seen even what was released to you that day yet, because you haven't been able to step out and release it. And so there are things that you're carrying right now that you're not waiting, uh, you know, for uh, uh, new impartations over your life. They've already been given to you. You just haven't had the opportunity to be in a setting to pour them out uh, in the capacity that's in there. And so I hear the Lord say very clearly that there's going to be an increase in signs, wonders, and miracles in your ministry. Whereas before you were going up and you were laying hands on people and they were getting, you know, rocked by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to get up there and you're just going to start to begin to speak and people are going to begin to fall out in the power of the Lord, just as you're speaking to the point where you're going to get interrupted. Okay. Like you're, you're going to be trying to make a point, build some faith in the room so that you can get to the prayer time and you're just going to get interrupted. And the Holy Spirit is going to come down and like a wave and then just smash uh, like uh, uh, the people are the rocks and the wave is just going to smash against people. And I believe you're going to have you're going to be in the middle of talking about some of your testimonies and things you've seen. And people are going to stand up and say they're healed. Uh, like just bones are going to come back together. Uh, backs are going to stop hurting. Uh, I, I see a broken, twisted ankle just like straightening suddenly. And, and that's going to happen just as you begin to try to set the atmosphere, it's going to take over and you're going to see this increase of miracles as you step in. I actually see uh, your foot. I see you stepping up the stairs to a stage. And as your foot hits the stage, the weight of God hits the room and people begin to get healed. And oh, it's, Lord. it's going to be an explode. You're literally just going to step on stage. Kind of the, what I see is the same, the same anointing that pastor Shazad carries where his foot hits the stage and demons begin to, to manifest. And he has to deal with the deliverance before he can ever preach. I literally see your foot hit the stage and healings just begin to manifest in people's bodies. Come on. I That's a good Amen. word for you. That's a good Come word. On, you should right? take that. Come on. <laughs> Come on, have I've, I've seen I've seen a lot of that I've happen read, already. I've have you have you already? Good, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah. just gonna be the normal though. It's 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 Correct. like for you to get to lay hands on individuals is gonna become uh, troubling. Like you're like, hey, I still I still I'll pray for people. Like it's gonna I be the same anointing as I feel in the house of Peter with the same jacket. Yep. Amen. 
Shakarabara. Amen. Yeah. So I just I just see an increase. So whatever you're seeing now, I, I see a doubling of that that you're gonna see when you step in. You're gonna go, and this is all just flowing so much quicker. Hallelujah. You know, I know you already see crazy miracles now. You know, it's it's I receive. It's, amen. Amen. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, who's this Diane Hudson here? Ren, come on, start up. All right, Diane. People, come on. Diane Hudson. Diane, I don't know what you uh I don't know what you've been going through right now, but I hear the Lord say press through for a breakthrough. And I hear the Lord saying that there's there's something that you need to press into right now. Uh, I don't know if it's a job situation um or something like that, but I hear the Lord say press through for the breakthrough and that the Lord is coming and showing up. Like I actually see him showing up as a knight in shining armor on a white horse. Like that's the image I see. And the Lord is saying, I'm coming in to rescue the situation you've been going through. So I believe that the Lord is showing up in whatever it is you've been praying for. I believe you've been praying for some kind of relief uh, and release from heaven. And the Lord is saying he's, he is meeting you in that quiet secret place of yours and he's going to show up there. And I actually see like a, a great intimacy growing between you and the Lord. And the Lord is saying that he loves you seeking him. And as you seek him, he's going to show up and show off and take care of all the other issues that are happening. If you'll seek, it, what did the Bible say? Seek the kingdom of God first and all these things will be added to you. Uh, and, and I want to tell you, I just, I saw the, 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 uh, the name Thomas flash in my mind, not the Thomas that we have on here, but I saw the name Thomas flash in my mind. I don't know if there's a Thomas close to you, a husband or, or somebody in the family there, but I just hear the Lord say, don't, don't, uh, doubt what I'm about to do, but press into it fully with faith and you receive it very quickly. So I believe the turnaround is happening very quickly in your life. So receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And, uh, let me see here. At another one as well. Uh, Carolyn, I believe that right now there is a shifting transition season that's happening over you in the financial department, over your family. And I hear the Lord say that what's coming next is greater than what's been here. So what's what's about to be released over your family financially, career-wise, is going to be a, a landing of home. I hear the Lord say, welcome home uh, as your husband takes a new position, uh, a new position at work. And there's going to be something that happens where he he finds um, something that's that I hear home, I hear home. And, and the Lord is saying that I'm going to give you a home and it's going to be a blessed transitional season. And so just do this, have peace, take heart and know that the Lord is going to bring you into his fullness with your finances and your landing place. And I think there's going to be like, it's going to shift. The season's going to shift. It's going to be really quick too. Um, I don't see it happening over the course of too long. Like I, I hear a couple of months and there's going to be a landing of, a, of, of that transition. So just receive that in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I just see, I see like typing on a keyboard. I just keep seeing typing on a, like typing on the computer. I, I don't know. Uh, oh, looking for, literally looking for a home. Oh, wow. Okay. So literally looking for a home. So I think the Lord is, is beginning to move you and shift you where, where all those pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Um, hallelujah. So receive that in the name of Jesus, Carolyn. See, you did this to me, Thomas. Thanks. <laughs> Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm telling you, you know what? Look, guys, when it comes to the prophetic, when someone speaks a word over you, uh, harbor it, uh, uh, store it in your heart as a treasure. It, it doesn't even have to register with you right then, but store it in your heart as a treasure and don't dismiss anything that seems bigger than you. The, the truth is, is when Thomas spoke over me and said, you're going to be a forensic prophet. The first week I started the power hour. I was like, man, I really appreciate him believing in me, but man, is that just so far off the radar of reality? Like I was like, dude, that, that is such a honoring thing to say, but he, he is way just giving me too much credit. And, and, and I, and I kind of dismissed it as not possible. It was almost like David being told he's going to be King. And he's like, I'm just the least brought, like, what are you talking about? I wasn't even invited to show up to dinner to meet Samuel, you know, and, and, and don't be afraid to, to, this is for somebody, don't be afraid to believe that God can use you at a greater capacity than you believe is available to you. 
Do not be afraid to believe that God can use you to change the world just because you're not that special. You know, uh, uh, I was uh, talking to somebody that came to our OSI conference that we just did, and they had an amazing encounter with God. God gave them a healing gift in their hands, and they were telling their mother about it. And when they told their mother about it, you know what the response was? That she goes, I'm sure you have lots of gifts. I mean, you're no Chris Reed, but I'm sure you have lots of gifts. And if anybody follows me, they know who Chris Reed is. You know, he's this, he's probably the most accurate forensic prophet in, in, in our world today, period, just period. Uh, and she made that statement and I said, why can't you be Chris Reed? I said, you know what? Don't ever limit yourself that there is not greatness inside of you. And so somebody today, you, you, you are, there's a, a small seed of hope inside of you that God is going to use you for great things, but you just don't believe that you yourself are worthy of those great things. Well, I don't, you, you've got all kinds of excuses. They're, you're like Moses. I can't speak well. And you, and you just don't believe that God can use you. And there's somebody on this broadcast right now that you have a powerful ministry that the Lord has put on your heart and you're literally telling yourself, yeah, maybe for someone else, but not me. I don't have the gifting to, to accomplish that. And it scares you to even think about. And you were where I was. Um, and I'm telling you, I'm speaking to somebody right now in particular. Um, and God wants to use you. God wants you to believe that you are actually a son or a daughter and that you can do more than what you've ever, ever thought was possible. And I want you to stop, stop insult. Let me say it this way. Okay. Stop insulting the living God by telling him his creation isn't good enough to accomplish the will of God. Stop believing that you were created less than capable of accomplishing his will for you. That's called pride. All right. That's actually putting the focus on you. If God told you to do it, then he's equipped you to go through it. Mm. So oh, you need to walk in that. You need to believe that, and that's not pride to believe that you're capable of it. It's not pride for me to take Thomas's word and say, yeah, I'm forensic. Um, if God wants me to be forensic, he'll make me forensic. It's not my glory. It's his glory. But I'm not going to limit him and tell him he is not good at making people. Yes. So stop diminishing your value in the kingdom of God. That is not humility. That's a false humility. And, and you need to watch it. So, so I know I'm speaking to somebody right now. I'm sure that's a couple of people, but I'm speaking to somebody. Um, come on. And, and I've met people that I've met people that have come on my broadcast that were just people watching and now they've turned into prophets. They showed up on the broadcast. They, they believe that it was possible for them. They've stepped out and they turned into prophets. Like it's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I'm going to have pastor Perry on my broadcast tonight. He's going to jump on my broadcast. Pastor Perry came to our OSI conference. He got so messed up and rocked by Jesus at the conference. He's been doing nothing but just praying for people everywhere he goes. And everywhere he goes, he's seeing bones snap back together. Like he's, lit, he's, he's telling me how he's touching people's spines or touching people's knees and he feels the bones snap back together. And he's like, it's wild because he just believed that Pastor Ren said it's that he's doing it. It's possible for me too. And I believe that I'm supposed to do it. And he's seeing crazy miracles happening since he's left our conference. And so it is available to you guys. Hallelujah. Anyways. That, oh, that's awesome. That's an awesome word. And, and you know, the thing is how, how many things can be done through Christ? All things can be done through Christ. And, and even what, you know, um, <laughs> Dr. Ren's speaking about is is that if it's if you can handle it, if you can if you can do it, then it's probably not God. It's probably you. Um, but through Christ, all things become possible, and it's our trust in Him to say, God, I can't do this alone. But with you, all things are possible. And this is written in the Bible. It says, without Him, I can nothing can be done. But with Him, all things are possible. And it's through tapping in and faith and belief in Him. Um, Jesus said, those who believe in their heart, the things that I've done, they will do. And this doesn't come with a, with a, being a doctor, right, Ren? It doesn't come with being a, a pastor. It doesn't come with any title. It comes through belief in our heart. Jesus says, those who believe where? Not in their head, but in their heart. Those who believe in their heart, all the things that I've done, they will do an even greater thing. So it's in our belief system. If I believe I'm not good enough, then guess what? I'm not, Right. It becomes our reality. If I believe I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me, 
then it's all possible for me. But out of my own works, it cannot be possible. But with him, all things become possible. If you've been reborn, if you've gone through a reborn experience, Jesus said, don't don't marvel. You must be reborn from above. If you've been reborn from above, you are a child of God. That's it. You know what I mean? It's not, you don't, we don't go around telling people who, who, who we walk and see who've been born that they're not children, right? And for them, you know, there is, there is things like shame and trauma and stuff that make us feel inferior or not worthy, but there are also a lie. But if you've been reborn from above, you are a child of God, period. Um, Jesus said, you must be reborn. And then, you know, then we get to enter the kingdom, right? So there's different aspects and different levels, but there's always more. And I believe that, you know, um, um, there's, you know, a couple people that you prophesied to, right? Uh, they're both ready for a breakthrough. And I think Diane was, to, I saw accounting and I saw missions over her life. But I saw a dollar bill in her hand and I saw her letting that go and she received five. And so I, I believe that her breakthrough has come through letting go. And and this is even for others. Well, we have to let all the stuff be used yesterday for the battles that we have to fight today are different and and weapon of our war is not carnal right a lot, a lot of times we like to use carnal things but our weapons are praise right we praise him we glorify god and those are those are where our strength comes from and it's a, the joy of the lord is our strength it's as we worship him as we praise him he fights our battles for us mm. amen amen uh from few minutes i'm praying in my spirit and i feel in my spirit uh if anybody in this broadcast have a business like a colorful stone or piece of wood like a colorful stone or piece of wood like a, how i can use the word like a like a jewelry type if anybody here I love to pray because again, again, I can see the colorful stone in my in front of my eyes, in my spirit. I love to pray if anybody there is a business with a colorful stone, with a necklace or uh, something like a piece of wood or something. I love to pray because again, again, come in my spirit. I love to pray if there is anybody, if you know somebody. Come on. Shakarabarasi. Ronald said, my wife and I do. What What do you guys do, Ronald? What you do, guys? Yeah, exp explain it a little bit. Please. Rashakarabarasi. Hallelujah. And if also there anybody have a problem in the neck, and if your relative, are you or somebody suffering with a neck pain? Please. There it is. Kelly Norwood said, I own a jewelry business. Uh, I spoke about the colorful stone or the piece of wood, something like If you have that, please explain. Shakaraba. Then we pray. Yeah, I asked to both us, men of God. Okay. Yeah, jewelry business and a fragrance. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I don't know Jeez. what that is. Papa Razi jewelry. Let's we pray. Brother, both of you join and we all together want to bless them. Amen. Lord, we uplift them. Thank you, Jesus. We uplift the business they are doing, Lord. Multiplication, Lord. Increase in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we bless them in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Bless this business in Jesus' name. Bless this business in Jesus' name. Lord, Lord, we uplift them and the business as well. We pray for multiplication, Lord. We pray for increase business increase business lord bless them in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. 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 if anybody uh with a neck pain 
Shakara Barasi. Hallelujah. Amen. So While we wait on the neck pain there, um, where is it? Uh, Charmaine. Um, was it I, when I when your name passed by? I just heard the Lord say nine months, um, and so I'm trying to trying to lean into that and see what the Lord is talking about. Did something happen about nine months ago? You know, October, November ish, right in that range. Uh, October, November-ish, was there a shifting season, something that happened that was significant back then? Uh, let me know. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Kelly said this, I have five bulging discs in my neck, the same one you were speaking oh. to about the yes. jewelry business. Father, we speak for complete healing. Line up in Jesus' mighty name. We speak all this line up in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. No more pain. Father, thank you. Lord, we pray for the sister and Lord, we pray for those that are watching us. If anybody have a neck pain, a neck problem, Lord, we speak healing in Jesus' mighty name. We speak healing in Jesus' mighty name. Dabra Shantara Yalaraba. Complete healing. Complete healing. We apply the blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Holy Lamb in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Oh, Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So, okay. This is tripping me out right now. All right. So, Shasharmaine said this. October is my birthday. And then she said it's mm -hmm. also my wedding anniversary. Okay. So, Come I on. saw nine months ago, which, you know, is, is October. Um so nine months ago, and I felt like I asked you if something significant was nine months ago because I didn't want to just necessarily uh, um, answer the first thought on my mind, which was nine months is the time of pregnancy. Okay. Nine months is the date of pregnancy. I'm not, I'm not prophesying a baby. What I am saying is I believe the Lord has made you pregnant spiritually with a ministry with something that's happening. And so I was seeing rebirth. I was seeing birth and October is not only your birthday, but it's your wedding anniversary. So a uh, birthday when you were born weddings, which people come together and then make babies. And so I believe the Lord is saying, you know, he said nine months and I believe he wasn't talking about nine months from now. But he was giving me an indication that, yes, that there is a spiritual birthing that's happening for you. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe that the Lord is bringing it to fruition. I actually feel like you're in the season of labor pains right now. I feel like God is bringing some supernatural desires to mm -hmm. you right now. And you're actually going to see it. I, I see some clients coming to you and saying, um, I hear them saying, shaking your hand and saying, yes, yes. And they're saying, I'm in. Yes. And so there's going to be some favor on you and your business right now that the Lord is just going to release favor for you. So I give, I release that to you in the name of Jesus. It's coming. Labor pains are coming. It's being birthed in the supernatural. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Uh, where is that family? I, when I pray for uh, the guys for business, Something come in my spirit, in my heart, and uh, if there is a right, please let me know. Both of you, you and your wife, you need prayer for your next generation, like grandchildren or something like that. If there is a true, please let me know because this come in my spirit again, again, I love to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Charmaine said, yeah, God's been doing major things in the area of business for me. Amen. Mm. It's good. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, Kelly, uh, tell me something about your next generation, like uh, your grant is true. Wow. They have 19 grandkids. Whoa. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they got a whole tribe. I didn't think they were old enough to have grandkids. I was like, no, he means they're kids. <laughs> uh, let me pray. 
Let me and pray. They, and they just came to visit from Michigan. So let me pray. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for blessing, Lord. We know the children are blessing from you, Lord. Lord, we bless all the grandchildren in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, you have brought in my spirit to pray for this couple and the grandchildren as well. Lord, fulfill the needs they have there in Jesus' name. And Lord, bless them. Bless them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, bring the spiritual fruit. Spiritual fruit. Lord, you know them better. In Jesus' name, we bless all the grandchildren. We bless them. We bless them as they grow day by day. Lord, we bless them. We bless them. We apply the blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Holy Lamb. We cover them with the blood. We cover them with the fire of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And coming days, use them for your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's good. Amen. If they, hey, if this is your first time on here, and this is your first time on the broadcast, say first time. Love to highlight people that have never been on before. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, it's good. Oh, well, he said he, they had a Bible study with two of them last night and prayed for them. You said you're 51. That's still not old enough to have 19 grandkids. That's crazy. <laughs> it started when he was 10. Like, good grief. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I'm trying. Like, I was, he was praying. And I was actually just sitting here trying to do the math and I just gave up. I'm like, that. that's crazy. It's way too young for 19 grandkids. One or two, maybe, but yeah. Wow, that's wild. Love the children. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, guys, come on. Please Thank share you. this broadcast. Come on. I think and maybe you took that uh, be fruitful and multiply scripture a little too serious. <laughs> and, then, and, and before we continue, guys, uh, one more time, uh, I'll love to uh, give a quick announcement. If anybody wants to sow the seed, uh, as we're working in the Islamic country, and you know it work in Islamic country is so hard, but we are going on. Thank you, Jesus. If anybody wants to sow the seed, and if anybody wants to be a partner with us as a monthly base, covenant partners, so you can make a commitment, whatever you want, and whatever you lead by Holy Spirit. Sow your seed for clean water project and sow your seed for uh, feed my sheep program in Pakistan. Come on, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, Ren, not your turn. My turn? I thought it's been my turn for a minute. Thomas, you got something? <laughs> Come on, I brother. can't see the people. Oh, you can't? Oh, bring some people, know. Ren. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when you just start calling things out. You just start saying, okay, is there anybody on here with this? Right? You start Thank just you, you start just calling out some injuries <laughs> with that amazing healing anointing you carry. Uh, Thank you. Lord. Yeah. But uh, 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 I, can't, I can't shake this, Thomas. I, I kept seeing this. And so it keeps coming back to my mind. So I think it's important. I don't, I don't even understand what it means. I, I actually see you working on your house there in New York, like fixing things up around the house. Uh, uh -huh. and I, I saw the Lord, like it was, it was almost like a reverse, like kid thing. You know how, like when the kid, like you're fixing stuff and the kids go get their fake tools and they pretend like they're fixing things and they're building things. And like, I, I saw uh -huh. the Lord say he, while you were building stuff at your house, he was building stuff in, in, in your spiritual house. And so I actually see him like you were in the middle of fixing some stuff up around the house and he was actually building a box. Like I saw him build a room uh, in the supernatural for you. And he says, I, I be I've built out this room to contain more of my glory. And I actually see you in this room in the secret, in the quiet place. Like you're in this room 
and you're praying and seeking him. And he says, there's like th this room contain, it's a new room that contains new treasure. And, and so I don't, I don't know what it is that you're about to step into, but there's something new. There's, there's an add on an addition that that's being released over your life. And, and I, I know I gave you that word earlier, but I just, I kept seeing this, you know, you're, you were fixing something at the house and he was building this room alongside you. Um, and so I, I don't know if like, while you were, you know, like a whistle while you work, I don't know if you've been praying and just seeking him as you've been doing some, some repair stuff at the house and just getting some projects caught up and all that. But I just felt like something had shifted in that atmosphere. Is that? Oh yeah. That, that's, that's, that's definitely accurate. I've been, I've been spending a lot of time with, with the Lord lately. I've, that's why you haven't seen me on social media or any way around because I've been, I've been with him. To... Yeah. Yeah. So some, yeah, something happened God. in that something happened. There was a building season that happened for you in the supernatural there. That's just created uh, um, something new that's being released in your life. And I just, I see it tied to that. So amen. Bravo. Because it's the, the oh, fruit man. of that. Yeah, the fruit <laughs> of that, that fruit of that intimacy that you have with him is going to be very apparent. And, and that's not why you do it, but there's just going to be fruit from it because of the intimacy. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good. Oh, man. I, I saw somebody who was having uh, anxiety and heart palpitations. Um, mm. and, and they had the, this anxiety and this fear. It's actually a spirit of fear. Um, and it's actually causing... Uh, an arrhythmia or, or palpitations in the heart, uh, where you actually feel like you're having heart attack or these kind of things and which actually makes it worse. Um, and, um, so I, I in the name of Jesus right now, uh, I, I break off every lie. I break off, um, every spirit of fear from your life and may the spirit of truth come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, um, in every spirit of trauma, every spirit of fear, I command to go. And may the spirit of peace flood your heart. I command healing in your body through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you, Lord, um, for this spirit of fear to be broken in, in every lie, to come to the knowledge of the truth, to come to the knowledge of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you for the angelic assignment over uh, Nung, is it Nung's life, Father, and I thank you, Lord, um, for the call upon his life, Father, and I thank you, Lord, um, that you've called him as a seer, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you will open his eyes, and I believe that's what the Lord is going to do even on this broadcast today. Um, as we begin speaking about Isaiah 22, I believe the Lord wants to open eyes today. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the spirit of truth to come. And um, Father, I thank you that you bring sight to the blind, but you also open the spiritual eyes. And Father, I thank you to touch Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask you to touch Nung now. Um, deliver him from this evil and from these attacks, even in his dreams and, and any nightmares that he may have. Um, I break that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. That's a good word. Yes, Lord. Ooh. In agreement. In the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, Tom, uh, Ren, please pray for Sister Sonia because most of them, she sent me the message. Hey, when Pastor Ren will come back to broadcast, we ask him for pray, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Sonia, I, I, I see the Lord handing you a key. Um, and when he's handing you this key, it's a skeleton key. And I hear him say this, that this will unlock many doors for you. Uh, not just one door, but there are multiple doors. I actually see three doors in front of you, Sonia. And I see three things. And, and the Lord says this, three requests you've made of me and three doors stand before you. And he says that I give you the key to open each one of these three in succession, one, two, and three. And I hear the Lord say, as you open one, the next one you'll move to and it'll become open and it'll become open. There's something that there's been three things in particular that you've been praying into. And the Lord says, I'm going to answer all three of those and I'm going to bring them back to life. And I hear resurrected power coming into them right now. So maybe uh, when I'm looking at them, I almost see like three prayer requests and three years, uh, three, three seasons that were tough. 
And the Lord is just saying that all three of them are going to be answered according to what God has said over your life. So uh, I, I think you, you, as you start to think about that, you're going to think about uh, uh, three major requests that you've been asking God for. And, and as they come to your mind, you're going to go, yes, yes, and yes. And those three doors are going to be open to you. And I hear the Lord say that you're going, as you press into my intimacy, I actually see you getting on your knees and just praying and uh, uh, seeking the Lord. And as you do that, there's going to be supernatural angelic uh, experiences for you where the Lord is going to just show up and and break open those doors. That key is going to be used. So there's angels coming around you that as you pray, I literally see angels surrounding you from the enemy, allowing you access to those doors. Uh, and they're handing you that key that you need to get through. So uh, increase in your prayer life. I don't know if you've been increasing in your prayer life. Um, uh, so if you've been seeking the Lord in your prayer time more and more and more, uh, that is that is where that key is going to be handed to you. So don't stop seeking him. Don't stop praying because I believe as you are praying, those angels are released to hand you that key. Uh, that's where it's going to come as you call down angelic hosts from heaven to, to uh, minister uh, while you're praying, they're going to hand you something. So something's going to snap. I, I don't know if that key is some wisdom, some strategy or something, but there's going to be something that's going to unlock those doors in the name of Jesus. I speak that over you. Amen. 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 Um, amen. Uh, Ren, before we continue, I just uh, uh, want to uh, ask somebody if there is anybody have a attack in the dream, the bad spirit attack in the dream. And I, uh, before I pray, because you know, most of the time when I always in your show and other shows, uh, Lord shows me up the things, the bad spirit attack in the dream. And before I pray for somebody, I just want to uh, let them know mostly these kind of attack in the life of women, not all mostly in men's life, mostly these kind of attack in women's life. And this is a hundred percent you you know about my ministry is a deliverance and uh, i have a uh, lots of experience a lots of experience about that kind of spirits so if there is anybody uh uh have a attack in the dream the bad spirits the evil spirits attack in the dream please show in comments come on hmm <sighs> Hallelujah, Rabba Shakara Bara Siva Rayala Rabba. Daba Kuburi Yala Rabba Shanturu Yala Rabba. We rebuke that spirit in Jesus' mighty name. We bind that spirit. Da Shakra Bra in Toro Yaka Bara Shandara Yala Rabba. We bind that spirits in Jesus' mighty name. In Toro Shantoro Yaka, no more bad dreams. No more bad dreams in Jesus' mighty name. No more bad dreams in Jesus' mighty name. No more attacks in the dream in Jesus' name. Dashakaratakabaras in Toroyalaraba. We bind the spirits. We bind that spirits in Jesus' mighty name. We speak for joy and peace in Jesus' mighty name. We speak joy and love, Lord. We speak for peace in Jesus' mighty name. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Cameron, Cameron Dupree, um, I see victory over you. Um, I see writing um, I, and um, I see the joy of the Lord upon your life. Um, um, the Lord has has called you the victory to success. Um, and um, I, I really see a a, a, a contrite spirit, a, a spirit of joy upon your life. 
and 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 again i see victory over time the, the lord has given you victory and he's given you favor there's a favor that's really what i want to what i want to say is is there's a favor and a grace upon your life to fulfill the call that he's given you um but i see this writing i even see a song i even see songs um upon your life and and i bless that in the name of jesus i bless your life and holy spirit i ask you to visit her even in the night season to deliver her from any attacks um, that the that the enemy may try to cause upon her life and may she have god dreams again in jesus name amen, amen. in jesus name shut up on the chicken amen Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Come on, guys. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you. My, my Superman. Come um, on. Uh, is there anybody on here that drives like a can't uh, like a like maybe a brown pickup truck of some sort? Used to drive an old brown pickup truck. Like I just keep seeing this person driving an old brown pickup truck, mm -hmm. and I feel like the Lord um, is talking about your future destination and where He wants to take you. Um, and I, I, I see you just driving down the highway in this old brown pickup truck. Anybody? Is there? Is, does that fit anybody? That's Come new. On. I've never seen that. Jesus. It's okay if it, if it doesn't. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. That could be a prophetic word or just sleep deprivation. One of the two. We'll find out in here in a second. Yes, Lord. <laughs> <clears throat> I, one thing I saw when when Pastor Shazad was was uh, ministering there is I actually saw, uh, and this was a woman that that there was actually a spirit of of seduction that was coming and visiting you. It was almost like you were being seduced in um in in, in your in your room in your private time. Even I believe sometimes when you're awake, and and I believe this is a this is a this is a, this is a, a witchcraft and. Um, I don't know who this is, but I saw this happening when Pastor Shazad was praying. Um, so now, in the name of Jesus, I break that spirit um, that's trying to seduce you. I break that trauma uh, off your life. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that it be exposed in the name of your son, Jesus. Uh, Father, I thank you for a hedge of protection for your guardian angels around her. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that everything hidden that you will bring to light um in jesus mighty name amen 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 amen, 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 wow. amen, amen. uh mm. bryson is it an older pickup truck because i felt like it was an older truck yes it was dark i know that amen come on guys Cool. <laughs> Every spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, that's Pastor Shazad's ministry right there is breaking off the spirits for sure. You know, we did the OSI conference just the other day, and like part part of it was on deliverance. And I, I leaned over at somebody. It was a fantastic teaching on deliverance. And I leaned over and I said, you know, I'm glad Pastor Shazad's not here for this teaching. I said, because he would just uh, lean over and look at me and go, why all this information? Why all this do this and then do this and then do this and do the, do this. And if that doesn't work, do this. He goes, you just tell them go and they go. You just say <laughs> they show up and, and they show and, and I say go and they go. Why all this need to do this and then pray this and then pray that. <laughs> and I'm like, if he was here, he would do. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Shaw, teach us how to do deliverance. They show up, you say go. And I'm like, oh, okay, not all of us walk in an anointing to just tell demons to go instantly and they leave instantly. So, hey, Ren, I'm not <laughs> kidding. I'm a witness. I met a one uh, pastor from America. He came to Pakistan a couple of years back and there was uh, 
uh, in the church there was a man uh, he possessed and demons came in him and uh, he just said to demons please demons go <laughs> please, please. Demons, go please i was like come on man he was very polite <laughs> use your authority because you are a man of god and say them go and i believe they don't have a power they can not stay anymore because there is a authority you have go and they must be go because you said them with the power there is a power of the holy spirit so he said demon please leave <laughs> <laughs> negotiate please demon leave <laughs> leave this man demon so whole church was wow and they said to me please would you like to pray for this man i said no no i just want to he will finish first then i will pray then uh, he left hit this man i say demon go right way and he stop in the second moment he stood up i say i'm okay i'm good <laughs> I'm good but I I know just I just want to tell you if you need the same power guys there are so many people watching us and listening us if you need the power especially in in deliverance way you need do much fasting you need to spend much time in prayer i was spending uh, in these days not 18 hours i spending 18 hours non stop in prayer in these days i'm too much busy but uh, but, uh, uh, but we spend almost 4 3 4 5 hours every day with my team two hours with my team one hour my personal bible study two hours my personal prayer so before i spending 18 hours in prayer and every day fasting every day fasting every day fasting and i have that power the Bible says, Jesus said to his disciples, this kind of spirit will not go without fasting and pray. So if you want to overcome, if you need the healing and deliverance power in your life, you must do fasting and pray. What do you say, Ryan, about it? Uh, I say that I can say to you, I see you cast out demons all the time. So whatever you say goes. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue. That's for sure. Yeah, but but you know, I, I, sometimes I, I I I'm tired because all from all Pakistan, from all Pakistan, this is uh, on record. From all Pakistan, Muslim and Christians, even pastors, refer to people and said them, please go to the hall. There is a pastor. Shazad. Go in his meeting. Go to his church, and he will pray, and definitely you will be released. And I just want to ask to all the guys, if you need the same spirit and same power, please start spending time in feet of God. Amen. In feet of God. So you will see the same power. Uh, I know Rand is a prayer guy and uh, uh, Thomas is also have anointing, healing and deliverance is part of uh, the ministry of Thomas because I saw his uh, lots of hope. Let's take okay. And uh, uh, Thomas, the ministry is also healing. I saw a lot of his meeting in Brazil and some different countries. His his ministry is the same like me. Okay, go leave, and next moment, healing and deliverance is there. Yeah, we so, we so see um, we see mass deliverance in, and I agree with you, uh, Pastor Shazad. Um, uh, there's a there's an impartation, there's an activation, there's an anointing. Um, but like you already mentioned, Jesus said when his disciples came to him and said, "Why couldn't we get them delivered?" It wasn't because they didn't want to or didn't believe. I believe he said only these kind come through prayer and fasting, and that comes through like um, uh, Pastor Shazad said through prayer and fasting. I, I've done four forty day fasting, water fast. And, and one of the most common questions people ask me, like when we go to Brazil, we see mass deliverance. It's it's um, it's is is that how how do I get that deliverance anointing? How do we how do we get to where you are? Um, and and it comes with a price. It comes through a price of I believe, uh, just like Pastor Shazad said, a prayer and fasting, uh, a place of denying yourself. 
that's really what it's all about is because when whatever you feed will grow right um if you're feeding your flesh then guess what your flesh man grows when you begin to feed your spirit um, Amen. When, you be, when you begin to deny yourself then things start popping up things that you didn't even know that were inside of you begin to be um begin to begin to come out they begin to be exposed and then you have no choice but to deal with these things. And I believe that's a lot of what it's about. Um, because where's the kingdom of God? It's within you. And mm. and when you when you begin to when you begin to fast and pray like that, when you begin to seek God and when you begin to fast, these things begin to come out of you. And um the kingdom of heaven is within you. Jesus said this, he says, You'll know that the kingdom of God has come upon you when you see the demons flee. And so it's it's mm. part of entering into the kingdom. It's part of operating into the kingdom, um, because right in the kingdom we are kings and priests. And um, it's like it's like being the president of the United States, right? Yeah, he anybody can say, yeah, I'm president and have authority. But guess what? Only the president of the United States signs a paper, makes the decree. He is a king on the earth. What he says goes, and and he has that authority. It's the same way in the spiritual realm in the kingdom it's like the price that you pay it's about um and it, it's about um it's about seeking him about denying yourself and picking up your cross and following and so these things it's where the applicable it's where kind of where the the rubber meets the road so to speak is it's like because you've done this i'll give you this and hmm. um and um it, it comes through prayer and fasting and that's that's really how i could explain it i've received yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's, you know and and i you know i've been through it i've been watching as well to say how do i get more how do i you know yes, how, how yes. do i get to where where he is in in in, in deliverance um because deliverance and healing are also like this they are very much combined yes sir um, um, and, i just want to I just want yeah. to share about it uh, because in my uh, almost in my crusades and meetings, uh, Ren know about that. Uh, bef uh, before our crusade, my team and me, we spent almost one month nonstop fasting and pray before crusade. And when I just enter, enter, never pray, just enter yeah. and put my feet on the ground, that area where is we organize the crusade. Demons start shouting. Tumors, cancers disappeared. Paralyzed, right, yeah. start walking and running. Blind eyes by, I have a video, a testimonies. Blind eyes by born, by born blind. Eyes came back to the children. By born yeah. paralyzed and uh, they, they, are, uh, they cannot walk easily. And I saw a lot of miracle through fasting and pray Amen. i was in africa many times in african different countries and you know there are lots of demons especially in african countries but yes. when i was in malaysia and in thailand i saw too much the little children five years ten years six years 16 years 20 years they all possessed in one my meeting more than one thousand people deliver from one meeting i have a videos People can go to my page. They can saw my videos in one meeting in one hour. Oh my goodness! So how <laughs> the power, the anointing? I believe that if anybody want to walk in the same spirit, they need to spend time in feet of God and must they spend the time in fasting. Come on, brother. Amen. 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 Yeah, I appreciate what Bryson said here. Look, I don't care if you're diabetic or not. There is fasting you can do. Uh, if, if you have medical conditions, seek professional, you know, uh, 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 medical professionals to help you do that. But I've seen fasting from diabetics all the time, and, and uh, um, it's amazing. And if you're, Sheila, if you're type 2 diabetic, uh, watch, the, watch the documentary called Fasting. It's just the word fasting. I, I promise you can fast. Do it with with medical supervision, but I promise you can fast. I, I, we see people at our church all the time that are diabetic that think they can't fast. They start fasting, and after two or three days, their bodies recover and they actually get healthier. Uh, but do it under medical supervision. 
Um, but but uh, hey, I just want to ask before uh, Ren you leave, and I I want to leave also. But I want to ask uh, that people they are talking about the fasting. Fasting uh, is not between you and men. Fasting is the matter between you and God, and you can make a commitment with God. How long you can do fast? You can do fast with water, or you can do fast without water. You can do uh, uh, fasting without food. This is between you and God. The fasting matter is not between you and with men, the, uh, with human. No, the fasting matter is between you and your God. So talk with your God. Make a commitment with your God. How long you can you want to do fast? You want to do fast with water or do something, whatever you want. This is between you and God. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 you know, Tammy, you make the point that it doesn't always have to be about food. I agree with you there. Although there's never an, a single example in the Bible of anybody fasting anything but food. So I'm very careful to suggest to people that um, you don't have to do a starvation fast. Okay. Mm. But, but a Daniel fast involved changing his diet. But I will say this, I've never seen, I'm very reluctant to tell people to fast something else other than, than, than a denial of the flesh when it comes to food, because there's not a single scripture in the Bible that I've ever seen that they fasted something other than food. Uh, it doesn't mean starvation. It can mean a change in diet, giving up something, giving up sweets, giving up sugar, you know, some, something that denies the flesh. Uh, mm. in that regard, but I'm very careful not to suggest that it shouldn't have anything to do with food because I've never seen a scripture contrary. Uh, oh. and, and so that's important to recognize. I think, I think it's very important that when we talk about the word of God, we don't just start making up our own things that yes, fit sir. what's comfortable for us. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, right. What's comfortable for us. So we say, Hey, I'll just, I'll give up this or I'll give up that. Look, a denial of self is important, but fasting always involved some sort of change of food. Uh, it's the yeah. most basic of human needs. And so to deny it is definitely surrendering to God. It is amen. the most basic of human needs. Uh, amen. So uh, I'm going to jump off here, guys. Uh, uh, thank you guys for letting me come on here. It's an honor and a privilege to be uh, available. Uh, I actually have a blessing to go get to uh, today. The Lord has favored me. I had a word spoke over me not too long ago that said I was going to get a free house. Um, <clears throat> and that's a big word. I, I'm going to get a free house. And, uh, you know, I don't take a lot of money for the ministry. In, in fact, I take almost nothing. Um, so the Lord has been blessing, blesses me in other ways. So we're refinancing one of the houses that we own. And with the refinance, my payments are going to stay the same on the current house I own. And the refinance is allowing me to go buy another house outright. That's a rental property for us for income. And so the Lord has blessed us with a house that will cost us zero dollars to own. And, and instead we get to rent it out. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the Lord has favored us in that way. And we're going to be able to go do that. And so that provides some additional resources of financial so that we don't have to take money from the ministry. Look, when your heart is in the right place and you're doing things for God and you have no ulterior motives in your heart, the Lord will always take care of you. And so that's a testimony today that the Lord is going to take care of us and provide us additional uh, meat. Not a lot, but a little bit extra because I don't really take money from the church. So, you know, I believe that, that the Lord is 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 building and putting it on people's heart. So the way you guys, so when I come on here or Thomas comes on here and we're asking you to give to Pastor Shazad's ministry so that we can reach Muslims in Pakistan for the gospel of Jesus, like that's an authentic cry. And I don't have to say, well, hey, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What about me? What about me? I can do that without stressing out because I know the Lord's taking care of us in other ways. Uh, Ren, I just want to uh, uh, encourage you and your word, uh, guys. Uh, during uh, the lockdown, couple uh, weeks back, with the support from FFC Church, from Ren and Thomas, some other friends as well, guys. There are so many friends in uh, this broadcast. They already saw the seed. So uh, we feed more than ten thousand families. Amen. In two months. Amen. Ten thousand. Families okay. and we are still continue and now we are going to start a clean water project because every year there are thousands of children die 
uh, with diarrhea and with hepatitis. So uh, if anybody want to sow the seed, feel free. And I want to say thank you so much, uh, my brother Ren and my brother Thomas. Thank you so much for your precious time. Guys, you are so awesome, guys. And God bless you both. God uh, bless your ministry as well. Thank you so much. Amen. Love you guys. Yes. Love you, my friend. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys for joining us. And here is a link, uh, the PayPal link. Uh, here is the link. And also I'm going to send you the link, uh, the cash app. Uh, you can make a big difference with your small seed. You can feed one family, two family, and whatever you need by Holy Spirit. Thank you so much. Uh, Thomas, you want to say something before we leave? Yeah, I just want to make a, a quick prayer. I'm going to ask the Spirit of the Lord to touch you. Um, to open your eyes. Um, as we began the broadcast, uh, the Lord put Isaiah 22, 22, which is the key of David, um, open doors, open eyes. Um, Father, we just thank you, Holy Spirit. We praise you, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you open the eyes of the blind. And Father, we thank you that you open the spiritual eyes for such a time as this, Father. We thank you, Lord, even as many have, are considering uh, fast. Father, we thank you that they don't look to us, that they look to you because Holy Spirit, you will guide them in all that they do. As they look to you, Father, we thank you for this wisdom to be released. Father, we thank you for open eyes. Holy Spirit, come upon them now. May the spirit of fire come upon them in Jesus' mighty name. May you open their eyes, Father. May you give them dreams. May you encounter them, Father. I thank you to unlock their destinies, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that you prepared them for such a time as this. And it's a time of release. It's a time of equipping. Father, we thank you to release Holy Spirit. And Father, we ask you to release your angels on assignment upon each life listening to this in the name of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your love, uh, Thomas. Thank you so much. Uh, tell me you need prayer for healing. Uh, I love to call you after this broadcast and I love to pray for you uh, uh, to call. So God bless you. Thank you so much, my friends. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, I will come back uh, at my Pakistani time is uh, uh, 10 p.m., uh, not 7 p.m. I will come 10 p.m. And uh, I have uh, American friends, a uh, powerful man of God, uh, Pastor Isaac. Uh, lots of people already know him. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for your love and for blessing. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for uh, all of them. They already sowed the seed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Guys, if you want to uh, do continue uh, to bless this ministry, if you want to be a partner with us as a monthly base, because we need your love and blessing, especially for this country, for this Islamic country, for the Islamic country. And uh, uh, you can be uh, partner with us and you can bless our ministry. So we uh, love to uplift you guys in our prayer. I just want to show you uh, if you're there. Uh, we have a prayer list. And I love to uh, please uh, write down your name in my prayer list. And we bring the prayer for all our partners. We pray for our partners. Yes. We pray for them. They are the partners. So please feel free. There is. I'm not talking about the money. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about. Uh, you can uh, send me the message inbox. And you can write down your name. And uh, whatever uh, you have a problem, whatever you need prayer, please feel free, uh, inbox me because my team spending uh, in my office two hours nonstop. Lots of people uh, saw us and watching us every day uh, through the Facebook live every day. Uh, you can write your prayer request. You can send the private message. So we love to write down your name in our prayer list and we love to uplift you in our prayer. Thank you so much. May God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.